what we have here is my completed uh, bubble art for Brian, the uh, casual picture of him sitting. I noticed in my previous video the mouse cursor wasn't showing up, so that might be um, might make things a little more difficult if you're trying to follow along. I might go through and replace that, redo that. Um, I've already done it twice, <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure if I'm wanting to do that a third time. If you have trouble with it, uh, I suppose you could always leave me some sort of comment, and I might be able to clarify it. Um, what we've got here are basically the outlines of his major shapes. Um, they are in kind of a bubble form, so you've got lines overlapping where you don't necessarily need lines like here where the arm connects to the shoulder, there's an extra line there. Uh, where this forearm connects um, to the upper arm here, there's a, a line. Uh, what we're going to do now is go through and clear out some of those extraneous lines. Uh, what I might actually do first is just kind of perhaps remove the sketch. No, I'll leave it for now because it gives me a good overview. Um, and I will um, tidy up a few things like this leg looks a little off to me, um, so I will maybe make an adjustment here. All right, I think everything looks all right for the most part, so I'll go ahead and start removing um, line geometry. And the way I do this is I actually cover it up with another shape. I don't, there's just no actual way to erase lines as far as I know. So I cover it up with another shape. We're going to keep using the same shade of blue, um, just for simplicity's sake, so that we can keep things separate. OK, so to remove this line here on the uh, underarm, I'm going to fill in a shape to cover it up. Now the problem with this is this shape has an outline too, so you can see where that is. So what I do is under the fill and stroke panel, the stroke paint tab, I will set this to no paint, the X. And there it is. It's uh, basically I've used a shape to cover up lines. And so I cover up that line there that I don't need. And I don't mind just a little bit of line seeping over uh, here and there. Sometimes it can add some definition, so I'm not too critical of, of that. But I will go through and finish um, covering up these lines. And once this is completed, then I'll do the detailing work. There were a couple things I noticed um, that I didn't mention before. Like if you have a shape, like this shape here, and you want to add another point, you can double click on the line and then you've got another node to work with. Also, too, um, when you click on a node, you'll have its handles if it's symmetric. What you can also do is up here there is um, Make Selected Nodes Corner. If you click on that, then you can edit each, um, each handle individually. So you can make a nice sharp point if you wanted to. I'm going to undo that since, um, since that's not anything I actually want. I haven't done his eye yet. I'll do that a little bit later. The eye is um, somewhat complicated, the way I do it anyways. And since we have Remember Last Stroke style selected in the preferences, we can just go through and do all these without having to set um, no stroke paint each time. And the reason I like using the shapes to cover it up is because you can still layer down or layer up if you want to cover up something independently of something else, if that makes sense. Like here I want to cover up this line that separates the thumb from the hand. Uh, and I press page down and then it removes that while keeping this finger here as it is so that I can remove um, this extra knuckle line there. 
and now that should look a little more natural on the hands, somewhat. Uh, hands could still use some work. I might actually grab these. If you select, you can press shift and select multiple shapes. You can actually layer up and layer down multiple shapes at a time. This crosshair is the center point, so if you want to rotate it, you can rotate it based on the center point. So I'll swing that down a little bit and then um, bring this out on these shapes. And then I think that'll look a little more natural on the hands. Yeah, somewhat. All right, I'm not going to be too nitpicky. This is just a tutorial here. I will remove these extra lines on the nose. It looks kind of like a cow, whereas he's not a cow, he is a horse. I will uh, fix some of that with detail. Um, I'll still need to do that nostril. Now, this shape actually was on the wrong layer. It's on the sketch layer, so I'll press Shift Page Up to bring it up to the outline layer because I had the, uh, the sketch selected for a moment. have this shape here and then I'll do page down because I don't want it to cover up part of the leg I just want it to cover up part of the crotch here so now the knee over here I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room I might uh, go through and fix this later this is kind of the shape I was going for there All right, now I have eliminated extra lines. That's not too difficult. What I'm going to do now is the detailing. Actually, first of all, let me just go ahead and add this nostril while I'm thinking about it, and then the eye. Now, the shape is there, but it has no stroke path, so you can't see it, so I'll select that and then do my three pixel width like we've been doing. All right, select all points. I want to keep this sharp here and this one sharp as well. And so let's see how that looks. Well, it's a little smoother, a little narrower. If the nostrils are too big, they look kind of robust and kind of, um, what am I trying to say? They're, they're a little more, um, primitive, I guess, whereas if they're uh, smaller, um, a little more subtle, they're a little more feminine. So, all right, now the eye. Here's what I'm going to do on the eye. So there's actually a shape here covering up part of the ear. I want to get this out of the way, so I'll move this line out here. It's actually invisible. What we would be seeing is this. All right, so I'm going to add the eye, and I'm going to keep this shape here. And I'm trying to decide how I want to do the eyelid. I'm going to incorporate, have the eyelid be a separate detail line. So here's the shape of the eye. I'm going to stroke path, and it's going to be three pixels. Now, what I do, this is a little wide, isn't it? It'll be fine. Um, what I do, let's smooth this out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this, make this a hole from the head. So select the head, and then shift-click on the eye to select the eye also. And then under the uh, path menu, you have the option of exclusion. And when you click exclusion, it makes it um, a separate... It actually makes it so that the one shape cuts out into the other shape. So I'm going to move the head here so you can see what the head looks like, and you can see that the eye is actually excluded from the head. It left a hole there. And, and again, to do that, you select the head, and then you shift-click what you want to cut out, and then you do path exclusion. I'm going to hit undo so it moves the head back in place. Now I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to create the, eye, uh, the iris here. So I use the circle tool. Um, I'll probably convert it to a path later so I have nodes on it because sometimes I like to be able to grab a whole bunch of nodes at once from different shapes 
the circle doesn't have nodes and it won't move correctly. So put the iris here, about where it'll be, and I will hit page down, and then that's going to be the iris. Maybe scale a little more. And now I'm going to create the pupil and make it a little more oval because it's kind of more directional. If it's a circle, it would look like it should be straight on, and if it's not straight on, then it looks weird. Now, because the, the shape, um, because everything is just lines, um, the eye and the nose, they don't look quite right. So I'll go ahead and I will make the, the pupil black. So I'll fill that in black. And the iris, I will make it a darker shade. I may not make it um, entirely um, gray or, or anything, but I'll make it a darker shade. And I'll also make the nostril a darker shade as well. I'm actually going to go through and color it later, but this is just so that for, to quickly eyeball it and reference it if, I don't, if I'm not thinking about what colors I'm using. Now you can see that the face comes together a little bit better. Um, the eye looks a little too wide, so I will shift click on all of these, including the head and then the nodes, and then I should be able to select everything. Actually, I'm not going to be able to select the... Uh, uh, actually, yeah, the, um, for some reason, I haven't figured out why on this version of Inkscape, I'm not able to select the, um, this was a newer version too, I'm not able to select the uh, nodes like I like. Uh, oh well, I'll just um, kind of squish it down manually. What you can do on another version of Inkscape is you can select nodes from various shapes, and then you can select and group all of those, and then you can scale or rotate um, all of those, which is really a nice feature, I think. But just for what we've got, that will work fine. Okay, and for the next little segment, we will do the detailing. That is the outline there. And you can remove the sketch layer and see, I mean, it looks like it's come together somewhat. We've got the outlines. So I will hit Save. And I will stop this video and start the next one.